scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. You don't choose a man when you can see the value he's providing. If I can provide the value of a billionaire, you should not have a problem with billions in my account. Are we together now? Yes. The question I want to ask you is, that seat of greatness you want, present to me the value that you are offering that authorizes you to sit there. Nothing for many of us. Are we seeing now? A woman once asked me to pray for her. I think she owned a school. And she said things were not working. The students were leaving. And she said a prophet came around to pray. He fed son. He prayed and told her there's something. Somebody in another school one other mama that had his neighboring school that she came and buried a charm in, in the, the madam's own school so that she would not prosper. When the woman told me that thing, I said, Madam, I minister deliverance to people, but I can tell you this is nonsense. That prophet, that, uh, the, 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 the prophet man, I may not call him fake, but I know that he's not seen clearly because most people use wizardry and wizardry peeps. It's in the Bible. He said, we are not like wizards, right? That peep. They peep into the realm of the spirit. There is no accurate knowledge. They summon strange spirits to deliver information for them, which can be aberrated. So he comes and the woman thinks the only reason why her school is not growing well. Why should I send my child to her school? Your school uniform alone depicts non-excellence. You don't know that colors are communicators. Check shirt, check, check short knicker. That's a school uniform, for instance. And then you put red or blue socks, carelessly done, with one tailor who is not competent, but is a brother to the principal. And so you allow the person to sew anything. You see someone very tall, and his, 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 his trouser is, is just at, around his lap. No excellence. What of the teachers? The te I'm, not, I'm not being insulted, but the teachers themselves, look at the result of the person teaching them accounting. F9 in accounting, F9 in maths, F9 in economics, F9 in commerce. He's the chief, he's even the head of department of maybe social sciences. Why? Because they attend the same church. I'm telling you why people fail. There is a place for the spiritual, but never think incompetence will be substituted for um, our competence will be substituted for, for prayer. Now, it is that kind of school. You finish everything. The name is not good. There is no intelligent PTA uh, uh, parents teacher forum. They are always fighting. You are increasing the school fees every term, every session, but there is no commensurate development. You write YX, 60 people write junior YX, only five have up to five credits. The students are not so dull. The teachers don't understand what they are doing. It is that kind of school. You write in miracle service and drop it and bring a seed and say, Lord, that school must change. And every time you pray, God tells you, go and meet somebody who has the best school in a city. Usually those kinds of people, they fight those who are doing well because they think they are colleagues. We all have schools. What is, what is the name of your own? You are not delivering. Let me tell you what keeps people incompetent. Don't think because you are doing the same thing another person is doing that that means you are colleagues. 
Are we together? Yes. There are men of God I see, I know, I honor them with my life. I know that we are all men of God, but I know there are levels and there are standards. I will not sit down and say, oh, this, no, 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 no. Everybody is clapping for Joshua Selman. The same way they are clapping for me, I'm clapping for others too. Are we together now? But this colleague mentality is what keeps people incompetent. You have a supermarket. It brings you one million per day. You have a small kiosk. It brings you maybe 15,000 per day. You now sit down together. We are all wearing suits. We are colleagues. Are you doing the same thing? No. Are you getting the same result? No. But in our arrogance, we say, we the entrepreneurs. This guy has a kiosk. This guy has a shopping mall. But that humility to learn there is a saying in Hausa that the person who can ask for road will never get missing. The, the keys to make us competent are there. It just takes meekness. But many of us are too embarrassed to improve. We are too ashamed to seek knowledge. Especially because that knowledge we want may come from those who are younger than us. Less privileged than us. So we don't submit ourselves to listen. I've been in ministry for 10 years. It's not working. But you say we are still ministry. We are part of PFN. We are part of CAN. A young man comes and in three years he's doing remarkable things. I said, forget about all those small children. He's young. That's why he's attracting his age mates. Have your age mates died? Why don't you attract them? Excuses that are reflectors of our, our lack of desire to move forward. I made up my mind it's a vow i have made with destiny that in every area where the lord wants me to excel i will master it and i will lead the field in the name of jesus christ if you are a preacher here i'm speaking to you don't join people when they are clapping for you and saying joshua selman you are the lion of the tribe of judah they are destroying you thank god for their uploads but go back and say it's time to walk be committed to personal development you are a businessman you hit your first million you don't cross your leg and say my soul find rest no you say the journey is just about to start thank god for all those things but i need to learn who needs to mentor me who needs to build me champions are champions because they keep moving mediocre are mediocre because they stop moving give yourself to continuous improvement continuous development Number five. The fifth law in the kingdom is the ministry of destiny helpers. <laughs> ay, 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 ay. May God bring a helper to your life. Mark chapter 2 verse 1 to 5. Please media help us. Mark 2 1 to 5. I'm teaching you the fifth law that is responsible for producing champions giants in the kingdom will you open up the gates hey, open up the doors will you open up the gates Again, he entered into Capernaum. Please, let's read this down to verse 5. After some days, and it was noised abroad that he was in the house. This is Jesus now. And straightway, many were gathered together in so much that there was no room to receive them. No, not so much about the door. And he preached the word unto them. Now something remarkable happens, verse 3. And they came unto him. You, isn't it interesting that the Bible hardly mentions the names of destiny helpers? It just says they, certain men, a certain man, never mentions their names, but mentions what they did. Let me tell you something. Destiny helpers do not even know they are destiny helpers. It says, bringing one who was sick of palsy, which was born of four. 
That means four people carried him. Four destiny helpers carrying a man. It says, and when they could not come nigh unto him for the press, what did they do? They uncovered the roof where he was, Jesus now. And when they had broken it up, they let down the bed wherein the sick of the palsy lay. Verse 5. When Jesus saw their faith, he said unto the sick of the palsy, Son, thy sins be forgiven thee. When you read on, he was eventually healed. Watch this. Write this down. Destiny helpers are people who have been anointed, assigned, and commissioned to bless you and to take you to the next level of your destiny. Anointed, assigned by God, commissioned. When Elijah was about to die of hunger in Brook Cherry, the Holy Ghost spoke to him and said, go to a city called Zarephath. He said, dear, I have commanded a widow. The widow never, act, she never acted like she was commanded. But God told the prophet, I have commanded. I have compelled her spirit to respond to you. Listen, no matter how hardworking you are, no matter how competent you are, in the dealings of God with men, a time must come in your life when someone else will have to lift you. Please come, Shadrach. Shadrach is right at this level. Everybody, please see. Watch this. Call this a level in life. I am up here standing. His desire is to come up here. Now, he has done well. He's played his part. Well suited. But he has the gift the grace, the anointing, but no access. Are we together now? He needs an introduction of a personality or certain personalities in his life called destiny helpers. Listen to me. The assignment of a destiny helper is to take you from where you are to the next phase of your life. Please, I want you to listen. Because some of us are at this level right now. The truth is you have refined your gift. The truth is you are competent. But you are saying, Lord, where is that man? Where is that woman who must speak? There are three kinds of destiny helpers. Please write this quickly. Three kinds of destiny helpers. Sorry, Shadrach, you have to stand. Okay, go ahead. Just, just write. Number one. The first kinds of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Divine connectors. Second Kings chapter 5. Divine connectors. Please give us from verse 1 to 5. Second Kings 5 from verse 1 to 5. Learn this. What I'm teaching you is not basic at all. It's not simple at all. It's a deep mystery in the kingdom that produces giants. The first kind of destiny helpers are called divine connectors. Who are they? Let me tell you who they are. They are men and women who do not have the physical capacity to lift you, but they can they have access. They can point you to those who can lift you. They do not have the anointing to heal you, but they can take you to a church where you will be healed. They do not have money to give you, but they can take you to somebody who can help you. They are called divine connectors. Their assignment is to connect you. They don't have the power in themselves to help you. Are we together? But they have access to an information that you need. Here is a situation. A great man called Naaman, the Bible says he was the captain of the host of the king of Syria. Listen, it says he was a great man with his master, an honorable man because by him, the Lord had given deliverance to Syria. He says he was also a mighty man in valor. But there was an area in his life lacking. He was blessed spiritually, blessed maritally, but financially something was still hanging. Are we together? He had excelled in every area, but certain areas were still hanging. And a miracle is about to happen to him. Verse 2. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and had brought, listen, away captive out of the land 
of Israel who a little maid you see no name again no name take note of this little girl because she's about to be a destiny connector it says a little maid and she waited upon Naaman's wife she was a PA to the big man's wife one day something happened next verse she said unto her mistress would God my Lord with the prophet that is in Samaria for he would recover him of his leprosy that's a destiny connector the little girl said I know I'm a, I'm a captive but while I was in Israel there is a man I know that that man is powerful I pray that my being little will not make you to not listen if you can please talk to your husband that he should go to that prophet I know he will be healed these are destiny connectors Sam I know you have this talent but I was browsing and I saw that there is an international music auditioning I'm not a musician but I thought the information may be important for you certain men destiny connectors are we together now this lady had no power to heal the man but she knew a prophet Kai, who knows somebody who knows somebody who knows somebody around your life that you have ignored there is someone who knows who will bless you but you have ignored them because they do not have capacity in themselves to help you let's run through this very quickly and one went in and told his lord saying thus and thus said the maid that is in the land thereof verse 5 and the king of syria said go to go and i will send a letter so on and so forth and all of that and when you read down to verse 10 naaman on account of in fact no 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 let, let's go to verse let's go to verse 8 can we go to verse 8 there's something i want to point out there listen and it was so when elisha the man of god heard that the king of israel had rent his clothes because the king was afraid right and then elisha said let him come now and see whether and he shall know that there is a prophet in israel read on and so on and so forth elisha came go to verse 12 listen look at this he had told him to go and bath in the river of jordan now historically speaking jordan at the time this man was given an instruction was not clean very dirty are we together so the man felt at my status to go and bath watch this he says are not all of these rivers you know better and all of that so he returned and went away in rage this is where i'm trying to go he was at the point of his breakthrough but in anger he was about to miss his miracle the destiny helper comes again and this and his servants came near and spake to him listen and said my father if the prophet had bid thee to do something worse will you not do it somebody came and spoke to him are we together again and said no no let me encourage you and that man went to bath when you read 14 and 15 he bathed seven times and his skin the bible records was like that of a child that of a baby destiny connectors i pray for you in the name of jesus christ that god will give you the sensitivity to see that men may be ordinary but they carry extraordinary things are we together now they may be your younger ones they may be children they may not have the ability to bless you but i pray that you have the discernment to listen to them when they speak to you in the name of jesus christ the second kinds of destiny helpers are called men of influence the second category of destiny helpers are called men of influence mark chapter 15 verse 43 please give it to us very fast let's let's be fast about it mark 15 verse 43 it says joseph of arimathea this was jesus christ now right we, we shared a bit of this during our prayer and fasting i'm reiterating it for so that we can believe josh um, joseph of arimathea an honorable counselor the bible says which also waited for the kingdom of god came and used his honor or influence he went boldly before Pilate and craved for the body of Jesus listen there are men in your life 
who can use their influence to open doors for you and to endorse you before great men you need them a time must come in your life where you will need them are we together do you know that please come assuming this lady is looking for a job are we together this lady is looking for a job she's tried and tried by the privilege god has given me to lead this ministry we have very influential people scattered around who honor the grace of god in my life and i appreciate it i can use my influence are we together and meet somebody someone like our daddy prof and say daddy please there is a lady here honestly she can be good for a secretary i endorse this lady i know that this lady is good daddy please do you have any friend that can give her a job do you know he may not have planned blessing her but because my influence is a middleman between two of them he's compelled by his honor for me to do something about her situation and this girl will get a job are we together god bless you there are men of influence those who preach and say you should not mind men of influence let me tell you what they are telling you remain where you are forever because it will take a joseph of arimathea to speak to the king for you men of influence men of influence i've shared the story here in koinonia true story that a, a guy who wanted to go to nda but there was a height level that he needed to 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 get to and he was short of it maybe by a few inches and they were about to deny him that opportunity and somebody who had connection to the emir of zazo here the emir of of, of of zari and all of that um came and met the gentleman and they wrote a letter no he didn't even write a letter he said they should go and tell the commandant of nda that the emir of zazo has added his height come on now that's called influence if the commandant does not act he knows what that means <laughs> to his daily bread to his career are we together look let me tell you influence is a force that moves men to their destiny don't you ever make anyone make you criticize influential people i pray for them in my life i want them in my life i desire them in my life one of the priceless things i learned about my father my father is connected to men of influence almost everywhere if it's police station my father knows somebody in the police station prisons my father knows someone if your car breaks down no matter the brand there is a mechanic somewhere my father knows it's an attribute in his life i covet earnestly are we together who do you know brothers and sisters that can bail you out of this wicked nigeria you can buy land as a born again believer and somebody can just come as a politician to bully you may god raise a man of influence to call him and say if you touch my pastor i touch your job influence you need influence in this life you see the people in the world are smarter than believers we sit down and keep praying in tongues and we fool ourselves you need influence bishop oyedeko is great today i know he's great as an anointed man but it's not just because he's an anointed man he's a pastor of influential people are we together if the managers of five banks are members of your church are we together your chief financial secretary is the is the is the ceo of zenith bank will you be poor as a church please answer me will you be poor as a church don't say it does not matter keep fooling yourself it matters big time in this country we live in you need men of influence many of our parents ignore them that's why they are suffering may god make you a destiny helper to someone that one letter from you to say no no i know this person in the name of jesus christ i want god to make me a man of influence i am very unapologetic about it i want god to connect me to politicians to connect me to business people to connect me to diplomats i'm not part of those liars in church who will say it doesn't matter i'm just a righteous man i have fortified myself i will still be holy with them and i will take advantage of the influence for the kingdom hallelujah 
when the former president i heard a very funny story i'll only say part of it the former president uh, of nigeria did something funny to one prominent um will i call him father elder statesman in nigeria he did something funny to him and um within three days he received a call from about five presidents this is verified they all called him and said what are you doing we had you did so and so, so to this man he made a request you didn't grant it the president himself was trying to call the man to beg him he didn't even pick his call this is verified i'm not just this ah may god make koinonia a place of influence please answer that amen well in the name of jesus christ hallelujah men of influence the key to strategic kingdom advancement is key influence not just evangelism that you are surrounded by men that matter so that somebody will not come with a tractor and bulldoze your church because he thinks he has influence uh -uh. influence gives you a voice the bible says a rich man's wealth is his strength it's, it's a fortification you need men of influence around your life there's too much wickedness who do you know in the army that god can use to speak for you who do you know in the military who do you know in the banking system who has god connected you with in the area of medicine if someone is about to die do you know a, an influential consultant who can facilitate his papers to go to india you need men of influence say i need men of influence open your mouth and pray in one minute send them to my life send them in my life send them in my life shabarako sebredi rikota shila karuya sebrahata la madakadia Lord, I pray one man of influence can change the story of your generation. One man of influence. Just one. Some of you, that's what brought you to Koinonia. You are saying, oh God, I need a miracle. God is speaking to you tonight. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hear me. You know, they say when they post you NYSC, once they post you and nobody can walk it before. Once NYSC starts, there is no hope of you being redeployed. So they told you, in my presence, I have seen people four months in NYSC. Carried away, not marriage, not pregnancy. Somebody used his influence and said, I need this person for his personal comfort to be in an area. It was quietly done. In Navy, you call it third list. But there are many lists according to what influence can bring are we together there are people whose admission letters are printed overnight jam irrespective come on now cut off point nonsense a voice is the cut off point influence and god brings them if you do not have men of influence you will join the queue in life and the queue does not move that's the sad thing about the queue in life there are too many greedy people in front of you who will not allow the queue move even when they have it they won't give you chance they will stay there till they die so the hope of you moving to your place of destiny will be impossible how many look at redeemed and living faith in every city in every place they have land do you know there are territories that antagonize christians they will not give you land but they had influence they spoke to one allergy who knows what their prayer did for him and said you better talk to your local government chairman to give us land and they say please give my pastor land as an allergy as much as he wants that's what influence can do may god give you influence in the name of jesus there are many churches in zaria who want to buy large properties there are there are lands around but they may never give churches they may never give certain people because they say one somebody holds it no 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 no. you watch what will happen in the name of jesus with koinonia let me tell you everybody on earth is a tenant nobody has a right to bully anybody for land god will give us land that will shock you it will be as if they brought it from heaven and just say pick it will happen by the spirit i'm not one of those fearful people who will not move the earth is the lord but you see it's not just the voice of heaven from the voice of god from heaven 
God will connect you to somebody. I have prayed for many unbelievers and I'm happy about it because they will remember my prayer the day I need their help. I prayed for them. If God gives them breakthrough, tomorrow we'll say, please, we need your influence to buy 10 hectares of land for Koinonia. And they will say, let it be done. If they refuse, the man will buy it in his name and sell it to us. Influence. Our parents rejected men of influence. Now they are paying for everything. Just to give somebody admission in secondary school. See how we fast and pray. Whereas one signature can answer that prayer. I pray for you from the depth of my heart. Any man who needs to enter your life, who has the influence you require, may the God that I serve bring them into your life. May the God that I serve bring them into your life. Please hear me. Every man on earth answers yes sir to someone. Are we together? If they refuse to tell you, go ahead. Find who they answer yes sir to. And they will answer yes sir to you too. He said, for I am a man under authority. I am under authority. So there are others under my authority. There is no man who is, no matter how people make themselves gods, don't be threatened by men's noise. They only talk. Every animal claims to be the king of the jungle until the lion shows up. When the lion shows up, he doesn't say keep quiet. They will be silent. Whoever has robbed your family of what is their due whoever has closed the door for you there are many of us your qualification can give you a job but the people endorsing you are like you so their words are not heard may god bring a, a man whose signature matters in the name of jesus christ there's no nonsense like a dog that is closed it's a mirage someone can open that door I've had the privilege of meeting very wealthy people. I've had the privilege of meeting very influential people. And I have seen the way doors open just like that. I've seen doors open just like that. I remember one time, one of our chairman, um, the chairman board of trustees of this ministry is a general in the army. I remember when he was a colonel, sometime in Lagos, you know, we are so close and every time from the airport he will send the military people with the car his car and then with military bikes nobody does any checking as soon as they are coming they just flashlight and they salute them access because of influence who told you driver's license takes three months it is the general thing when my international passport expired the general himself, he drove me, sir, with his car. We went to passport office in Abuja, in Kaduna. I even did the first one in Abuja. So it was even complicated. In 30 minutes, how many minutes? About 30 minutes or so, they brought out my passport for me. And I was ready to go. The woman who did it, the madam there. Last year, I went to minister in Nigerian immigration, their fellowship, their chapel. When I went there, there was a woman. They had moved her there and quickly I made friends with her because my passport would expire again. <laughs> Keep laughing at me. Don't lend the wisdom in what I'm saying. Listen, when you see men of influence, don't resent them. You resent them because pastors have taught you. They are all unbelievers. Don't mind them. Mind them. Mind them. Just make sure their influence does not destroy you. But please mind them. Don't have that mindset of throwing men of influence and think every gate will open to you just like that. But the greatest key is to become an influence yourself. When you become an influence, you become a magnet to influential people. Oh, that's why I love the anointing. Goodness, goodness, goodness. The anointing will bail you out. It will make you an influence. You will not just look for men of influence. They will come to you. The Bible calls them Gentiles. It calls their kings. It said they will come to the brightness of your rising. The last kind of destiny helpers are faithful men. Faithful men. 
men who will stay with you in the thick and thin. 90% of the people you will ever meet in your life don't like you. They come to you simply because of your gift and what you represent. You will hardly find people who love you for who you are. But in your life, there are men you will find who love you for who you are. They will stay with you. For time's sake, first, first Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. Please, let's hurry up. First Samuel 22 verse 1 and 2. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, you reign. You reign, you reign. Hello, him, you reign. na 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 Hallelujah. David therefore departed thence. David was running away from Saul. Saul was about to kill David because he was termed a rebel. Are we together? Now David ran. And the Bible says he escaped to a cave, not a palace, a cave called Adullam. But the Bible says, and when his brethren and all his father's house had, they did what? They followed him to that cave. There are men that can follow you even when you are in the cave. May God bring them to your life. Let me tell you something. Listen. One of the most disastrous things for a leader is to not find men who believe in you when things are not going well. They leave you alone when you are lonely. But there are certain destiny helpers called faithful men. Are we together? Faithful. He said a friend is made for adversity there are many of us when you go through bad things there's nobody to stand there with you when everything works well everybody comes but there are a kind of destiny helpers called faithful men verse 2 and everyone that was in distress one that was in debt everyone who was discontented gathered themselves unto him and he became what captain over them in a cave how do you submit to a man who is a failure how do you submit to a ministry that does not have result how do you remain loyal to a business that is not working it's called faithfulness there are such men there are such men we were discussing the other day with Ejimi about a particular man of God who had gone through rough times in his life and nothing had changed about his ministry not one person we know of influence had left the ministry because of what happened and i said they are called faithful men they are not called men of god they are not called assistants they are called faithful men may god position them in your life how many great men in this country have fallen and they are left alone there are some of us when our parents were wealthy there were all kinds of relatives now right now there's nobody to even pay your school fees because there are no faithful men. There are psychophants around in our world. But there are people called faithful men. The Bible says that he was captain over them. And they were with him in a cave. 400 people in a cave. There was no hope. It's not like they were there hoping things would change. They were saying if we die, let's die with you. God. If you are a leader here, please let me give you a secret. Every time you pray, don't just pray for gifted people pray for faithful men a faithful man is better than a gifted man a gifted rebel is not an asset hallelujah verse 3 and then we'll stop and david went thanks to the okay let's just stop there i'm not going to read let me give you the next verse to read first chronicles first chronicles that will tell you the whole story all till but, but then we are looking at something else. First Chronicles 12. Let's read 1 to 3, then move to verse 38. First Chronicles 12, 1 to 3, then 38. Let me show you something very powerful about these faithful men. Look at this. He said, now these are the men that came to David in Ziklag. I'm fast forwarding now. 
he says while he kept himself close because of Saul the son of Kish he said they were among the mighty men what did he call them helpers of the war so they had stayed with him even when he had now become mighty and was ready to fight he trained them they remained there they had now become helpers of the war and it lists all of them go to verse 38 for time's sake read with me please everybody hallelujah mm. all these men of war that could keep rank do you know what that hold on that means when david told them you stand as a musician they remained as a musician because david said it absolute loyalty regardless of results are we together he says they came with what a perfect heart nobody was doing eye service they loved him genuinely they were willing to die for him genuinely he said to make david king their determination they said david you don't need to bribe us we we are alive to make sure the word of the lord in your life will come to pass do you know god can send this man with you everything in your life can nose dive and they will come and say jimmy if everyone will leave you i will be here for you whether your wife gets pregnant or not i am here for you how many pastors are hiding many things in their lives because if members know they will run away because they are selfish people but there is a grace i truly believe there is a grace that attracts faithful men to the life of a man watch the kinds of people you are attracting and don't be too quick to say these people are my friends we even say they are my right hand men a friend is made for adversity adversity separates people you will be shocked to see how many people will call you king of the jews and crucify you tomorrow but this guy said they were with a perfect heart to make sure a jimmy becomes that ceo with a perfect heart to make sure that abiodun gets to that place of destiny so even if they would die in the process no problem there are such men listen he said and all the rest also in israel were of one heart to make david king they threw away their own personal agenda and said david for as long as you are not king we will not rest do you have such people in your life who will take responsibility and say for as long as you have not gotten that federal government job i will not rest you can call and say Ka uncle you have tried don't worry god is faithful you say god is faithful i take it as a ministry to make sure you become gainfully employed and they will run left right and center while you are sleeping they are awake they are saying help my son when they captured reverend Ntia Ntia, is in Akwaibo, Ibom Uyo. when they captured him Dr. Paul Enenche said he could not sleep. Because he's not just because he was his spiritual son. He said no, he began to engage certain forces and he started making calls all around. Called his spiritual parents. Oyedeko, they called Adeboye, called federal government people and called people and said, you better look for those assassins and release Intia, Intia right now. Dr. Paul Enenche went himself to a quiet bomb and went to prophesy on that soil and say i command that my son be released faithful man is it not enough to pray from your house when a man leaves his house to your own to help you it's no longer just friendship it's called faithfulness pray in one minute lord bring faithful men i'm tired of false people in my life take what i'm saying seriously i'm teaching you mysteries that will make your life flawless faithful men faithful men even when they know what you have done they say it will never change my relationship with you pray there are businessmen who crash just with one scandal because everybody around them is a psychophant there are pastors who crash with just one rumor because there are no faithful men it's a terrible thing to live your life building men to and then realizing that they are not faithful make sure you are praying lord bring faithful men to my life 
Hallelujah. Listen. Jesus had a crowd just like Koinonia. He was teaching them. They were there for different reasons. One time, he taught a message that was too hot for them. The Bible said they started leaving. There were only certain people, his disciples that stayed. And he asked them a question. He said, will you not also leave? And then Peter, he said, to whom shall we go? Don't you know we are sold out? To whom shall we go? He said, you alone have the word of life. And when they were crucifying Peter, theologically, historically, they kept Peter and were about to nail him. And Peter said, I have one request. I know I will die, but I'm, I'm not worthy to die in the same position with Jesus. Turn me upside down and let me die. Faithfulness unto death. I like you to pray, especially those of us who are trusting God for marriage. By the time all you have in your life is a man who just wants you because of figure eight, you are in trouble. By the time you have a woman who just likes you because you have money or you are working in shell, you are in trouble. Lift your voice and say, faithful men. Faithful men. Faithful men. Pray. faithful men faithful men anointed to stay with your vision anointed to stay with your life hallelujah hallelujah there are many people who pray for me the prayer department prays for me my parents pray for me but there is a woman you have never seen the woman i met this woman in a meeting and the woman said she had a revelation when she listened to my message she said i have entered a covenant with god she said i'm an intercessor i've entered a covenant with god that until i go to heaven i am an intercessor for you and your ministry god is i've never given this woman one naira god is my witness you can ask the protocol and all those who follow me they don't even know the woman i have never given her one naira once in a while she'll just send me text and say my son just know your mother is praying for you i tell you there are times i'll be trusting god all decisions and her text just comes faithful people they will never ask for money they will never ask and say when you get there it's chop by chop they 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 see it as a ministry to make sure you prosper i've seen people like that with all humility and by the grace of god one of such people is our daddy here i remember when um there was a time that you know we're looking for the venue for ministry and all of that do you know daddy took the responsibility single-handedly there are still people here they they would ask about koinonia as if it's even their ministry it's like they are more concerned about it than me i sent a text to a few people telling them we're trusting god to buy land you know to, to to get land and all of that and one of the women sent and said i've been waiting for this she said i've been waiting for this make sure when it starts my contribution comes in she said i will be offended if my money is not part of the money that is used to buy land faithful men a pastor may have nothing but faithful men and i tell you he has more than assets he may not be able to play the keyboard well but he's faithful he will die with you are we together there are people who were once in this ministry today they have left some of them are abroad they are the ones spreading koinonia messages around i don't know them but they take those messages all around it's an anointing that is upon this ministry faithfulness i tell you we don't force people to do anything here there is a grace i saw it in certain ministries i pursued it like a man pursues water when i found it i got it and i knew many of us have too many disloyal people in our lives you are not sure of anybody close to you they will laugh with you now and when they turn they can say crucify him let me tell you no matter how careful you are you cannot make men faithful by yourself it would take a heart under God for them to vow and say, I love this man. I am loyal to him to death. There are people today, they bring a gun to shoot. 
they will stand and receive that shooting for me. I know that. Not everybody, but there are people. You need that in your life. Because you are dear face, booking people, chatting with people and saying, you are my best friend. You are my best. This. They will leave you. Let me tell you something when the going gets tough. Because in every man's life, there are valleys. There are times of challenge. How many wives left their husbands simply because for one year, there was no money. They packed their load and went. How many husbands left their wives and started looking for another small girl simply because after five years, she could not give them a child faithfulness is important don't think i'm joking when I, when we are saying this please i want you to pray again and say lord in my life send faithful men i told you they are anointed they are commissioned they are anointed they are commissioned they don't just come they are sent Send faithful men. Send faithful men. Hallelujah. Number six. Please sit down. We're rounding up. The last key that controls undeniable results and impact in the kingdom. This is probably the greatest of the laws that I know. It's called the law of honor. Pay attention. Somebody's life is about to change. The law of honor. Matthew chapter 10, verse 41 and 42. There is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results in the kingdom. Listen, I'm establishing the law of honor. The law of honor is predicated upon a revelation that there is an anointing. Hear me. There is a grace for every dimension in the kingdom. Results do not just happen. There are graces that activate possibilities. There is a kind of grace that brings influence. There is a kind of grace that brings wealth. There is a kind of grace that brings freshness. Are we together now? So that's the first thing you need to know about the law of honor. That there is an anointing for every dimension of uncommon results. How you know there is a grace working is when the result becomes consistent regardless of the opposing situations. When a result becomes consistent, there is a law and a grace at work. Number two, Human beings are God's reservoirs of spiritual anointings, spiritual graces. God keeps his anointings in men, not in jars, not in Goya oil. They can just be prophetic contacts. But God's instruments, God's instruments for hosting his anointing. Listen. He that receiveth a prophet in the name of a prophet shall receive what? Look up. Did he say shall receive God's reward? There is something called a prophet reward. It's the reward that goes with his office. Are we together? It is the possibility he can release to you in honor of the God he serves and the office he represents and it does not just mean a man of god is a law every time you see a man walking in a dimension consistently regardless of opposing forces there is a grace making that i have seen people in my life they are not very wealthy but they never beg i don't know what kind of grace that is the moment supplies are about to finish, something else comes. They never have one billion, but they never lack. If they need to travel abroad, someone pays for the visa. I've seen these people, very strange people. They kneel down and say, Lord, send help from Zion. And men are rushing. They will not bring one billion. They don't have 20 cars. They may just have one or two cars, but you will come to their house, you will never beg for bread. 
He said, Grace. Are we together? When you see a ministry exploding in membership, there is a grace. When you see people moving from one dimension to the other, there is a grace. You can see a lady who may not even represent what supposedly most ladies may think brothers want in sisters. Yet you find 10, 12, 15 brothers flocking around and everybody saying this and that. She can say, no, I'm in a relationship. He say, close that one and come to me. I'm, I'm ready to whatever it takes. And you are wondering, come, my brother, is it that, is it that this lady is gold? He says, me too, I don't know. It's a grace. Are we together? That lady will leave that ministry and go to another one where nobody knows her and the result becomes the same. There are people, when they ask you something, you can't say no. You, you swear heaven and hell and say, this is the last time I'll give anybody this, this lantern. They just knock and say, Ejimi, please, can you help me with it? You stand up like a zombie and pick it. There is a grace. There is a grace. I have seen this. There is a grace that brings a healing anointing in a ministry. It's not just by faith. There are people who have these graces. Now listen to me, please. Your life revolves around the levels of the possibilities you have activated. I wish what I were saying were a lie. I would have quietly apologized and just sat down. But this is true. It has changed my life. It is changing my life. It has changed this ministry. It is changing this ministry. The law of honor is the cheapest route to greatness. The law of honor. I used to think service was the cheapest route until I learned the law of honor. My goodness. You can quantum leap your destiny in one day. You can veto imperfections in your life by practicing the law of honor. It has worked in my life like a charm. The Bible says, He that receiveth a righteous man in the name of a righteous man shall receive a righteous man's reward. He that receives a fruitful woman in the name of a fruitful woman shall receive what? A fruitful woman's reward. He that receives a millionaire in the name of a millionaire will receive a millionaire's reward. The keys that made him what he is. Listen, you can, men are dimensional. That you are close to a man does not mean you have exhausted his dimensions. There is Joshua Selman, the human being. There is Joshua Selman, the friend. There is Joshua Selman, the man of God. Are we together? There is Joshua Selman, the businessman. There is Joshua Selman, the whatever it is. There is a dimension you have not seen. If you only know me as a man of God, you receive that reward. If I become your friend, you will have access to certain things that people will not have. Are we together? If you come to see me in the capacity of a man of God, you can sit down. I will open my fridge and serve you because you are coming as a man of God. But if you come as my friend, when a Jimmy comes to see me, whatever I'm eating is what he will just pick it and keep eating. He, has, he is not going to ask me. We will even talk about it. He wants malt. He can open the fridge and carry it and will take are we together? Because we are friends. Are we together? But when we begin to talk, we align to the relevant dimensions that reflect the graces we carry. When I'm talking to my parents, we can crack jokes, but when I'm about to say something serious, I switch because I'm talking to men who brought me to this world. They have an anointing to speak over my life. Are we together? You can see me greet our daddy and just crack jokes. But when I'm about to talk to him, I talk to him in the capacity of the grace he carries. Are we together now? That's why you see us do certain things like some of our elderly ones, we don't let them just join the queue, they sit down. These things are communications of honor. That's why we provide buses for you after the service. It's not just that we have money to throw around. No, it is to honor you. It's a law of honor. Because it is our belief in this ministry that everybody seated is carrying an anointing. And most of those anointings, we need it. 
and so we honor you to receive it are we together now yes you want a car you see somebody who has a car you buy fuel you are receiving him in the name of a car owner you will get a car owner's reward you see someone in a relationship you don't keep gossiping about his relationship you package a seed and sow into his life and sow into that lady's life and say whatever made you get this good man whatever made you get this good woman you got this woman when you were not born again meaning it was not your effort this is grace i need it you sow into that life you are working someone is not working and you are saying is it teacher that i'll sow into you see so you never rise one day you get up in the morning and wash the person's clothes and iron the clothes and he gets up and says ah my roommate what is this for he said i didn't iron it as roommate i'm tired of joblessness i'm tapping into the grace that frequency in the spirit that afforded you opportunity out of the millions of jobless people you got a job how many barren people have honored those who have children they will criticize them hallelujah an anointing you have dishonored has run away from your life an anointing you have refused to bring into your life through honor Maybe the reason why you are grounded. Hear me, I'm rounding up. You saw a prayer grace in Koinonia. And you felt, please, these guys just pray too loud. They just shout like idiots. I like the excellence. I like the word for the prayer. And so you find out that you pray for five minutes and snore your life away. Because you ignore that grace. It's called the spirit of prayer and supplication. You saw grace for an accurate understanding of the word and you criticize it that's why those who criticize great men never become great you see why our parents are sincere but the way they are they criticize every preacher on tv they criticize every actor they criticize every government worker when they watch news everything is criticism they insult everybody who have you insulted to your detriment whose anointing have you resented let me tell you the key to activating the law of honor. Number one, you must believe in God. Number two, you must believe in the vessel who is the carrier of that anointing. You must not just believe in the person, you must believe in the office, the operation of that anointing. I, I pray for you that you get this. We're about to pray, but you need to get this. For in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reverence you, Lord. I will reference you, Lord, for in your presence there is life everlasting. I will reference you, Lord. Listen, I have followed men and women who have carried on common graces not just in ministry i have i have i have honored them with my life i saw into different tv ministries because koinonia will soon have their own tv ministry i never open my mouth and criticize anybody's tv ministry because somebody is going to be watching our own soon so i plant a seed of honor are we together now I sow into the lives of people's children because I'm planting a seed of honor for my own children. I don't want my children begging for school fees, begging for bread. So I take care of other people's children. That's why I don't kick children and throw them out here. I take care of them. Let me tell you something. Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. Whatsoever a man soweth, without fail, except for the mercy of God, he will receive it. We have criticized people. You have not started ministry. Yet every man of God does not have Rema for you. You are in for a shock. In for a big shock. You have not started business. Yet you look and say, Kai, 
this guy is talking, talking, talking. It's as if he's by luck. Say if he built this company, continue talking. No reference for people's sacrifices. Let me tell you something. Behind every glory, there is a story. If you do not respect the story and the glory, you will never replicate it in your life. Never ever. Never ever. There are people by the grace of God who I have never met eyeball to eyeball. I've heard about them. They have reproduced the grace upon my life verbatim. Every anointing you see is yours for the taking. But the key is honor. Honor is not kneeling down and lifting your hands. Let me tell you something. Honor is not kneeling down lifting your hands. You have heard that there is a favor anointing in this ministry. I don't know whether you believe it or not. There are many people who never believe it. So you will sit down with circles of disfavor. Whereas people are recording unending testimonies of the hand of God. By the grace of God, everything we do in this ministry prospers. It's a grace. Have you tapped into it? Is it working for you? Listen, as a faithful person in this ministry, you should be a reflection, an epistle of the graces and the anointings that are here. Don't let people come from somewhere. You see how people behave when they come from other places. Their hearts are open. They are not distracted because they are coming only for a few hours or a few days and going back. But many people just sit down, koinonia, koinonia, and they enjoy. And after the grace, they stand up and walk away. Proximity to an anointing does not release it upon your life. It takes honor. Honor is the spiritual magnet that brings graces to people. Me and Ejimi were watching a man of God one time. And I looked at this man of God. I said, Kai, this guy carries an uncommon grace for wealth. An uncommon grace. He's not so fluent. He's not even so intelligent. You know that there are many business principles this guy does not know. But there is, there is an uncommon grace. This guy had 10 cars in 10 weeks. One, one every week. Uncommon grace. And we said, no, this guy knows what he's saying. I will not criticize such a man. I will listen with my heart open. I can ignore his imperfections and get what I need. Listen, anointings do not flow through perfect vessels. Joshua Selman is not a perfect vessel. If you are waiting for perfection, you may never enter certain levels of grace. Ignore the imperfections and get the anointing. We are going to pray. Hebrews 7 verse 7. Shabala katabara to say. I will reverence you. I will reverence you. There are things that were not in my life before. I know they were not there. I knew when they came. I honored my way through them. Honor is not human worship. Honor is not even giving somebody offering. It's just a communication. The honor is a recognition and a celebration of the hand of God and the sacrifice of that person in the secret and in the open. There are men of God I will never talk against in secret and in the open. It doesn't mean I agree with everything they do. Honestly, I don't. However, I honor them with my life. I'm not ashamed to declare that they are custodians of certain levels of grace. You receive it. We have resented people. Little results in our lives. But we are very quick to resent people. You see a lady getting married and you look and say, Ah, and she's not fine. No, Kai, the way God does his thing, Seth. See? That's what your eyes could see. What you just said in the realm of the spirit is I dissociate myself from this experience. That's what you have said. Every time you communicate dishonor, that's what you say. Lord, I dissociate myself from this experience. We are going to pray. Six laws I have given you. You will play them like a computer game and watch your life skyrocket. You will, you will tame life like a chess. You know how people play chess. Life is not magic. It's not chance. 
as haphazard as it is there is a synergy there is a rhythm to life i pray in the name of jesus christ that you see everything i've been saying it's one thing to hear what i'm saying but it's another thing to see it he says i will stand upon my watch i will set myself upon the tower right he said and i will see what the lord will say to me some of these things i share with you freely i got them from my own mistakes i got them through pain i got them through sacrifice but they are irrefutable laws bring any man for me walk this laws and watch satan bow watch gates open by themselves i don't care whether it's gates of finances i don't care whether it's gates of health i don't care whether it's gates of ministry gates of business there is nothing you are doing that has not been done before ask those who master this key if he's setting up a company you are not the first to do it if it's marriage you are not the first to do it if it's barrenness you are not the first to be barren the day your light comes that becomes your day of salvation something i have ignored i used to do a lot of things and allow people punish me there was a man of god that set me free just one revelation from him i could go and borrow money and come and help somebody to be careless and run into debt at the expense of the carelessness of someone because i felt i had to be everything to everybody and one day one man of god delivered me his name is Dr. Mike Modok. Just one statement. He said, never do to people what only God can do to them. Ah, that was it. That was my deliverance. I found out that I was becoming God to many people. So I was taking God's responsibility in the lives of so many people. And it was killing me. And I said, no, rather than being God, let me start leading men to God. And it gave me freedom. There are some of us who are always paying bills for people who are not serious. You give them 20,000, they go and destroy it. You give them 100,000 for a business, they throw it. And you keep doing that. It's running the finances of your home. You are being God to them. Lead them to God. Teach them the principles. Give them access to responsibility. Rise up on your feet. Let's pray. hallelujah we're just going to have three prayer points i'm going to give us the next five minutes i'd like you to blast in tongues we're going to pray the secrets of the kingdom like bishop oyedeko will say that has been responsible for producing stars in the kingdom life is not guesswork stop guessing koinonia stop guessing you can walk circumspectly by knowledge by knowledge, by knowledge, lift your voice and begin to pray in tongues. Pray in the spirit. Pray. Pray your ignorance away. Pray your doubts away. Pray your way to the realm of uncommon exploit. Pray your way to the realm of enviable greatness. Pray your way. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. Pray the secrets of the kingdom. the secrets of the kingdom but thou O oh Lord had a shield for me you're my glory you're the lifter up of my head only thou O oh Lord had a shield for me, my glory, you're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me, 
You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. But thou, O oh Lord, but thou, O oh Lord, had a shield for me. You're my glory. You're the lifter up of my head. Hallelujah. I like you to pray and say, Father, I'm ready to trade this secret. You have shown me. Teach me how to use them to produce uncommon results. Lift your voice and pray. There is an unction that teaches men. I have taught you, but there is a voice that can teach you. Pray. You are rising. I'm telling you, you are rising. This truth will lift you up. Lord, I'm ready to apply the kingdom. I'm ready to apply the kingdom. We are going to sing one song. Just one song. I'd like you to sing it with all your heart. It's a prophecy. Because in the next one minute, I want to pray for you. There is a grace that activates this. I've taught you the principles. But there is a grace. Arise, shine. My light is come. Personalize it. The glory of the Lord is risen upon me I arise my light is come I feel the glory of the Lord is risen upon me sing it as a prophecy I will arise hey, hey, my light is come in this year of multiplied grace and influence, the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. Arise, the light is gone. I see the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Isaiah 60, please. One, two, three. We are going to sing this song one more time. As you sing it, listen. I want you to see yourself like someone coming out of a pit. See yourself coming out of financial pits. See yourself coming out of all kinds of things. Sing it with understanding. The Bible says sing praises with understanding. Sing it and we'll read this scripture. And I'll pray for you. I arise and shine. My light is come. Oh, hallelujah. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. I will arise and shine. I arise and shine. My light is come. Papa Shatalabakaya. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. One more time. I arise and shine. I arise and shine. Yeah. My, light My light is come. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon me. Arise, he says. Shine for your light. What I've been teaching you has come. All you have been hearing, the mysteries.
that produced champions in the kingdom has come it says and the glory of the lord is risen upon you verse 2 for behold it says the darkness shall cover the earth cross darkness the people he said but the lord shall arise upon you and his glory shall be seen upon you verse 3 hold on listen i like you everywhere you see die put my this is a prophecy for you before i speak over your life are you ready read it convincingly as a prophetic word one to read gentleness shall come to my light and their kings to my rising one more time and gentiles shall come to my light and their kings listen i have seen this thing in the spirit i have seen men rise while i was seeking god for this year god told me it's a year of multiplied grace and influence it's not just a name brothers and sisters we are about to round up we're getting towards the end of the first half there are signals that i'm beginning to receive in my spirit that men are going to change states like day and night believe what i'm telling you that's why i'm teaching you this the lord began to put it in my spirit it's time for people to change my own assignment is to teach you this and release the grace god's assignment is to watch over his word and bring it to pass lift your hands as i speak over you please i want you to believe the bible says blessed is she that believes he said for there shall be a performance i pray for you the gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now the gates of the next level of your destiny be opened now the gates of the next level of your destiny by prophecy be open now i speak to you change levels now change levels now change levels now change levels now I speak to your finances money has a spirit i call you to men now i call you to men now i call forth resources in the name of jesus hallelujah lift your hands i want to end struggle this life of hardship that many people are going through i pray for you the life of struggle and hardship he said they are taking for a prey and none said restore i command that life of hardship come to an end now 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 hallelujah hallelujah I want you to believe in the Lord. I want you to believe what I'm saying. I want to release favor on you. I don't know how to make you believe this thing. But brothers and sisters, I can kneel down and beg you. Receive this prayer I'm about to pray for you. There is a grace that favors men in this life. If you walk your way to destiny, you will die young. I knock on the door of favor. And I pray in the name of Jesus by the anointing of the Holy Ghost step into a new dimension of favor right now right now step into strange favor a new dimension of favor a new level of favor like a mantle let it come upon you like a mantle let it come upon you like a mantle let it come upon you. Hallelujah. Listen. There is a grace for performance. At the beginning of this year, the Lord told me, son, 
there is an anointing I've put on your life called grace for performance the anointing that forces things to work it doesn't matter whether it has worked for anybody or not there must be a way around it to work I pray for you I don't know what has refused to work in your life that grace for performance receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus receive it in the name of Jesus hallelujah the anointing that calls destiny help us there is a grace like a magnet that draws them wherever they are I place an anointing on you let it call them now help them please help them under the anointing I call I place that grace like a mantle it will come upon you now hallelujah I pray for you everything that has closed your glory so that you are not seen tonight in the name of the Lord God of Israel I declare may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see may your glory rise for all to see hear me there are people here you get results but you work for everything by yourself everything by yourself i stop that circle in your life in the name of jesus hallelujah father i pray these six keys that have taught your people the key to activating them in their lives that one is not learned it is received as an impartation i pray for you every one of you under the sound of my voice the activation the key be sensitive to what i'm praying i'm not just talking the key that activates these operations i've taught you in the name of jesus i stand by this apostolic and prophetic anointing i hand it over to you in the spirit receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus receive it in the name of jesus lift your hands and begin to thank god and say i have something receive it through thanksgiving lord i expect things to begin to happen in my life i have the knowledge i receive the empowerment hallelujah hallelujah very quickly our time is up please help them anyone under the anointing just help them i want you to go back i'm glad we are finishing this series in preparation for miracle service please don't miss miracle service one of the things that will happen on friday is an extensive time of impartation there are people you need to carry some graces in your life hallelujah please make sure that we're going to pray for the sick yes but i i truly want an anointing upon your life that will turn you around and will begin to open up certain doors for you so please don't miss it all those who are worshiping with us for the first time please let's keep standing just for a few minutes we're out of time let's honor them please make your way to the front if this is your first time worshiping with us here in koinonia we love you we honor you god bless you sirs god bless you please appreciate them as they come appreciate them as they come hello scriptures exhort us from the book of proverbs it says my son attend to my sins incline thy ears to my words let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee as you have listened to this message we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well that you will keep these words in the midst of your heart that no matter the circumstance your eyes are going to be fixed on these words and as you have been blessed 
will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.